it's it's a real delight and privilege to catch up with uh, Padma Shri Vipin Bakshi. Vipin has been a great uh, friend. He has been a pioneer um, within the optometry sector in India with over four decades experience. Um, and he had the privilege of being an optometrist to seven former presidents of India. Thanks so much, Vipin, for taking the time. Thank you, Vinod. Thank you so much for having me on your show. It's a real pleasure always catching up with you. So, Vipin, uh, I mean, just wondering, you know, from the time you started in optometry to now, a lot of things would have changed. I mean, you've been instrumental in, in, in getting a lot of these changes done. Um, just wondering whether you could highlight, you know, some of the big differences you see in the profession, you know, four decades back to now. Vinod, I passed out in 1977 from the All India Institute of Medical Sciences. Nobody knew what an optometrist was. We were basically called refractionist because the only road we had was refraction, refraction, and refraction. Now, this refraction was without your autorefractometer or even without a streak retroscope. We were doing refractions with a simple mirror and bulb. So, the, our only role was to test eyes, and we were termed as refractionist, not as an optometrist. Over a period of time, things have changed. Today, an optometrist has a totally different status, but it's a totally different ballgame. And there are so many things an optometrist can do today, which we could not imagine we could be able to do in a few years from now. And, 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 and say, for example, if you want to pick two or three key things that that have changed, what would they be? A, contact lenses changed the entire scenario. Right. We started doing hard lenses, then soft lenses. Then disposable contact lenses was a real game changer. That was the time an optometrist was known to be a contact lens practitioner also. Because with disposable contact lenses, the complication rates went down considerably. Mm -hmm. Most of the problems with contact lenses was not because of contact lenses, but because of the deposits on the contact lenses, which as an optometrist or as a refractionist, we could not treat. With the, the, with the coming of disposable contact lenses, by the time the deposits were being built up on the lens, the patient had to face the eye lens again in the eye. So the complication rate went down, the chair time went down, and we had more happy, satisfied clients. And but just taking it down, you know, forward, you've been the optometrist for seven former presidents. Uh, what is it uh, being an optometrist to the number one person in the country? I mean, what's, what's involved there? I'm sure it must be quite exciting, but at the same time stressful too. It's, it's a very, very good feeling, sir. But over here, I would like to quote Dr. G. N. Rao. He very often says, perpetually every time you meet him, that there is a force above us which controls us. So there, was, there is definitely a force above us. We do our work and he decides what, what is the role we have to play. It has been a very, very wonderful experience from dealing with the cream clientele. And whatever little bit we could do, we have done. And, and maybe I think for the sake of people who wouldn't have had the privilege as you had, uh, can you maybe narrate one example of some kind of an interaction you had with the president that that still you still remember? Sir, I have had the privilege of dealing with seven consecutive presidents of India. The one thing which I've learned from each one of them are basic human values, which no school of optometry or no MBO can teach you. Each one of them had a different value, different good values which I've learned from them. For example, most of them virtually lived by the watch. Mm -hmm. Timings for everything was fixed. Mm -hmm. If President Venkat Ramanji would call us, he would serve us a cup of coffee, but he would just take a sip of water and keep it down. He says, this is not my coffee cup. Mm -hmm. Timing for everything was fixed 
and you could never tempt them. You could never tempt them. Till the age of 98, he played badminton singles. Right. No, no heart, no blood pressure, no sugar, nothing because of his and same body weight for 60 years. Wow. <laughs> These people have, they, such people I don't think so are made anymore. Yeah. So you, you, maybe at some stage you can write a book on all this experience. I, I, I hope I, I can, but who did it? Nobody will read it. <laughs> Well, no, I'm sure. Yeah, I'm sure there'll be a lot of a lot of people who read it. And now, just in terms of the future, I mean, you know, you've been instrumental in taking a leadership role in building the profession. Um, what do you think is the future, and and what do you think we need to do now to make it a very strong, vibrant profession? You know, for for decades to come. Sir, when I joined the profession, everything was there, but I used to feel that the respect which a professional should get. And an average optometrist was not getting sir. We were always sort of assistant to so-and-so. We Optometry as a profession was not an independently viable profession or I would say independently acceptable profession. Mm -hmm. My dream has been to make optometry as an independent profession to be at par with, with say a dentist or an engineer or with a professional or with a lawyer, whatever you call it. Mm. I can't optometry survive on their own. Mm. So today an optometrist has got many, many options, whether it is teaching or professional services or diagnostics. And of late, optometrists have playing a very, very vital role in LASIK procedures and refractive procedures. Apart from the flap part, for which we are not qualified to touch, rest 80% of the work we can do. And an optometrist is the only person who can give a neutral platform to various ophthalmic surgeons and hospitals to come and do the procedure with them. A machine on its own is not independently viable. Yeah, yeah. It has to be a neutral platform where no surgeon hesitates in coming and doing the procedures. So an optometrist can give that scientific platform to a very wide cross-section of hospitals and ophthalmic services. I think I think it's great what you've done. I think it's been commendable. I think uh, I I really commend you for the leadership you've given to this sector. Uh, even for IVI, you you've given us so much advice. I remember coming and meeting you with Professor Brian Holden maybe a decade back. Oh, and and also, yeah, thanks for your continuing man. guidance and support. I have a lot of respect for that man. What a man. Thank you so much and look forward to being in touch. Thank you so much, folks.